Welcome to Movie Class by Pizza Flicks. Please stay tuned for today's program, but first, some tasty tidbits from your host. Let's see if you could guess. She dated heartthrob Tab Hunter, was engaged to Burt Reynolds, shared the silver screen with the biggest stars of her day, but is best remembered for stirring the passions of a caged amphibian creature. Who is Lori Nelson? While still attending high school, Dixie K. Nelson, as she was then known, was crowned Miss Encino 1949 and caught the eye of Hollywood agent Milo Frank Jr. On her 17th birthday, August 15, 1950, the beauty team signed a contract with Universal International a subsidiary of Universal Pictures. She made her big screen debut as Lori Nelson, co-starring with James Stewart and Rock Hudson in the 1952 Western, Bend of the River. Next up, Nelson was opposite Donald O'Connor and a talking mule. She then joined the Ma and Pa Kettle family for two films shot back to back. That November, Nelson won Photoplay's Most Promising New Face of 1952 by a three to one vote. A frequent date Tab Hunter won in the men's category. The following year, there was All I Desire with Barbara Stanwyck, and then a Western with war hero Audie Murphy. Here's a bit of trivia. Lori Nelson is the great grandniece of John J. Pershing, the only American to be promoted in his lifetime to General of the Armies, the highest rank possible. She closed the year co-starring with the Kid from the Bronx in The All-American, which also introduced platinum bombshell Mamie Van Doren. And then there's the movie she's best remembered for, Revenge of the Creature, the last film of the 1950s to be filmed in 3D. Her last film at UI was another Western with Audie Murphy. For better or worse, when her option came up for renewal, Nelson refused to sign without a pay rise. Her first film as an independent was in Roger Corman's The Day the World Ended, sharing the screen with another movie class favorite, Richard Denning. When Ford introduced their Thunderbird, Lori was one of the first celebrities to get one. Originally only available in Raven Black, Torch Red, Thunderbird Blue and Snowshoe White, but Nelson held out until March 55 for a bird in Goldenrod Yellow. Later that year, she scored the title role of Hot Rod Girl behind the wheel of a Ford T-Bird. Nelson had leading roles in the Western Mohawk with Scott Brady and in Paramount's Partners, the second to last film by comedy duo Martin and Lewis. In 1957, there was Untamed Youth. Set in the rural south, Lori Nelson and Mamie Van Dorn shared top billing as out-of-control sisters. It was also the last movie by Lori Nelson made for movie theaters. For her next production, she stepped into the glittering box and never returned. Which brings us to today's feature presentation. A 12th century legend comes to vivid life in this Technicolor TV musical, originally broadcast Thanksgiving Day, 1957. Somewhere in Bavaria, the town of Hamelin is overrun by rats. Who do you call? The Pied Piper, of course, preferably one as charming as Van Johnson. But after he worked his musical magic and rid Hamelin of its rodents, he was double-crossed by the town's avaricious mayor, played by the original Invisible Man, Claude Rains. Our featured star of the day, Lori Nelson, plays the mayor's daughter and the sweetheart of the schoolmaster, who looks awfully like Van Johnson's double. And let's not forget the whimsical Jim Backus as the king's emissary. Happy holidays.
I saw him. Who? That Piper. It's magic, the things he can do. <laughs> do you know? He looks like you. Really? You must believe me. I do, Paul. Just a single chore, and that's getting play. The river bank is filled with all the clay we must dig. We are part of what they tell us is a task mighty big. Singularly honored to be here making bricks. And when they're taken from the kiln, they're ready to lay. We are proud to do this labor, even though there's no way. Keep it going, never slowing. Add the water to the mortar. Make it thicker, do it quicker. Ever onward! Ever upward! Citizens, in my elation, permit a minor proclamation. It would be a travesty of modesty were I not to say aloud, you do your mayor proud. We'll be rewarded. The time draws near. The good king's emissary soon comes here. <laughs> when yonder clock chimes with golden tone, the banner of the king will be our own. Wealth and fame will be ours. Hamelin Town is sure to be clockmaker to his majesty. <laughs> Where is the clockmaker? Yes, your honor. Have you completed the molds of the golden chimes? Well, I cannot, your honor, until this construction is prepared for exact measurements. I'm shocked to view your efforts flagging. Woe to Hamelin if we are found lagging. Here now, you precious little brats. Put on your gloves and get to work. During this emergency, I proclaim a patriotic aim. We'll stretch each hour and crowd each minute. Work is more fun if all are in it. Therefore, our little men and women will voluntarily eliminate school and play. Oh, Father, they have so little time as it is for play. Less than half an hour a day. Time for food and time for rest. How else can we make Hamelin best? But Trucin will be furious. It would indeed be curious if that fool were not. Your Honor, the mayor of Hamelout seeks audience with you. Oh, our rival of long tradition. Methinks he feels the pinch of competition. <laughs> Trucin, Trucin, 
Foles told me of this new decree. Mara, this time they've gone too far. But they hope to win the banner of the king. The children need to learn and play, to dance and sing in the sun of the day. The council's mad with envy, greed, cherishing things of no use or, or need. A banner here, a medal there. Children bewildered, in despair. Songs outlawed, play forbidden. Love ignored. It's outrageous. I know. But the worst crime of all is melting down the gold of the town for chimes. Trucin, for my sake, don't anger father. He angers me. It's time I spoke up. But I can't defy him. He could forbid our marriage. Today he hinted. Oh, accept without protest this new order. Just this once for me. Just this once. How many times have I turned from their crimes because you feared to anger him? Each silence brought a harsher measure. Now not a minute is left for play. Someone in Hamlin must protest. Arouse the people, force a test of who is strongest, what is right. He and the council have the power. Would you ask me not to fight? Deprive me of my sight? To see the world through but one eye? Half the truth and half the lie. It would be as if you say, love me every other day. Would you have my heart in part? How can I tell you? How can I convey? What's deep inside me? Will I find a way? When saw things as I do, then you'd realize that I, that I mean no harm to your father. My only desire is to right what's wrong and to have you believe in me. before we usher in the mayor Hamelout. He'd stop at nothing to best us. Show the gentleman in. Remember, those who listen smiling and wise are never taken by surprise. A mercy is a virtue. You'll find a plenty here, sir. We're doers, sir, not dreamers who cry into their beer, sir. I come to tell of a cruel and tragic plight, sir. The river of Vaser has overflowed its banks. All we possess has been washed away. The fair city of Hamelout is submerged. Our people have taken to the hills with scant clothing and no food. So utterly desolated is our city that even the rats have fled before the onrushing waters. 
There are no rats in Hamelin. Our needs are great. Children cold and hungry. Help us with food and shelter. Your kindness will rebuild our city. A pity. A deep felt pity. Yes, once it was a lovely city. Good sir, we are deeply moved by your tragic plight. We'll search our purse and cast about for something worthy of Hamelout. Return to your people without further ado. We'll see what we can do for you. You will have the everlasting gratitude of our children, sir. Ah, me. It is sad indeed to find an arrogant enemy in need. Our chief competitor wiped out. I feel a tear run down my snout. So three tears for the clockmakers of Hamel out. I take it you've reached your decision. We, we have. have. I take it we're unanimous, all agreed. We'll help them in their hour of need. What? We'll send our deepest sympathy. Uh, of course. Indeed. I think the nicest way to tell them our gentlest sentiments on the softest vellum. Oh, yes. Together with suggestions <laughs> on how to guard against future floods in their front yard. How nice of us. To give advice. To one of our competitors. A word of warning, gentlemen. There is danger still within the very gates of Hamelin. With Hamel out not in competition? Beware of complacency. There are other rivals in this race. This is no time to slacken our pace. Let's put our backs in our work. More effort by twice, nay thrice. Good advice. Thrice the work around the clock. One for the tick and two for the top. <clears throat> no time wasted for children in schooling and fooling, nor women with their chatting and their tatting. No loss of a minute in any manner if we're to win the good king's banner. I protest! I protest! Oh, it's only truson. <laughs> we're in official session. Uh, get out. You'll hear me out. I'll make it plain for all to see how monstrous is your new decree. And he would be my son-in-law. Why, I refuse, it is not hard to see. Your son-in-law I do not seek to be. Just husband to your daughter. Spouse to her, and not a thing to me. How silly can he be? Aye, you rob the children of learning, laughter, and play, and darken their lives in the sun of the day. You mock your neighbor in his hour of need, blinded by arrogance, bloated with greed. You're selling your souls in the shoddiest manner for a worthless rag a king calls a banner. A uh, worthless rag? The banner of our king? Why, it's treason even to think such a thing. Hear me. Of all your stupid crimes, wasting our wealth for golden chimes is a crime for which we'll have to pay. Deprive your children and you'll rule the day. Who let him in? The man's a traitor to Hamelin. Let us throw him out. Throw him out. Undermine our prestige. Prestige is a sort of a kind of a fame. It's the look of a claim at the mention of your name. Prestige be to see like the best of your ilk. Have your mate gowned in silk. Though your children have no milk. You may be poor, but your prestige can be great. Whom to call dear mate. Prestige is the prestige is the feel and the smell of success. It's the one happiness every smart man must possess. People think you must be not who's who, but who's he to the ultimate degree. Prestige is the bar sum of gold that you paid for your coat's fancy braid just to hide a spot that's aid. Though, though all your creditors may press and besiege, they will respect you if you've got prestige. Prestige is the badness you strive to amass to be sure you surpass all the others in your plan.
trade. When you're hungry, don't trade your prestige for gold or jade. The key to prestige isn't why, but it's how. When you're met, do they bow? Do they pass you or count out? If you should lose press your pets are dead. Make sure that you sure that, you, that you take if there's no bread. Prestige is the thing that we constantly chase. What our hands must embrace when we're faced with saving pain. safe here. John! must be in writing. Father, we've been invaded. Invasion? Send a messenger to the king. Uh, we'll get the army. It must be the refugees from Hamlout. They will not invade us with their misfortune. Not by people, Father. We've been invaded by... Ouch! <laughs> it's a plot, an evil conspiracy. The Hamloutians have sent their rats to us. What audacity? I'll issue forth with a proclamation. Ouch! Oh, Father, not a proclamation. We need a fumigation to get rid of them. Aye, aye, that's right. Quiet. Everyone be calm. I'll prove that this is just a false alarm. Let's put an end to this agitation. Your council has the situation firm in hand. Here is my proclamation to be written on the finest vellum. It is herewith decreed that in this hour of need, each and every citizen will employ his wit and wisdom and ingenuity to end this willful act of retaliation of Hamelout, the meanest town in the nation. Here, here. We know how, and we'll show how that we know how. 
We don't see how a decree will drive the creatures from Hamelin. They chase the dogs and kill the cats. And bite the babies in their cradles. And eat the cheese right out the back. And lick the soup from the cook's own ladle. Split up the cakes of solid scratch. They nest the side men's sunny hat. And even spoil the women's chaps. By the Good people, rest assured, your mayor and his council will treat this emergency with a keen sense of urgency. I promise you, the councillors will think as hard as every other citizen for the duration of the crisis. Meanwhile, before we give you a solution for this plague, don't stand there looking vague. Beat them with brooms. Kill them with stones. Remember, the, the emissary of the king will tolerate no such thing. Where are listen? The music of the piper. Oh, Paul, you're imagining it again. Who's listen? You hear it, don't you? Yes, I think I do. Yes. No, Trucin, there is no music. He thinks our mayor is a naughty. That's for his counsel, shocking, to think we bygones lined with ermine for adults who can't or won't determine how to rid our town of vermin. I better give your brains a racking. Find the remedy that's lacking, or sure as fate will send you packing. Yes. Uh, we'll yes. Bolt the door. Did I promise too much when I said you'd think? Remember, everything's at stake. Our action now may make or break us. They'll take, take us. This spot is hot. Now, let's be calm and not forget we in Hamlin live by reason, regardless of the season. Only in reason's light can we end this blight. I have it. It's as simple as pork and sauerkraut. We'll flood them out. And suffer the fate of Hamel out. The council is a clown. Or worse, Hamlin's in the grip of a curse. Let's face it, the situation's tragic. We'll not be saved. Saved by magic. You call me. The door was bolted. Who are you? Although I wear no roll of sable, it so happens that I'm able to charm all creatures neath the sun, that creep or swim or fly or run. If you have an invention, I attract attention, chiefly with a secret charm on creatures that do people harm. The mole, the toad, the newt, and viper. <laughs> Who doesn't know the Pied Piper? You have a trap. Always they search for the better trap and other forms of tastier pap, so dear to the hearts of every sap. Uh, no insult to your honor. On this, a special tune I'll play. And lure the rats away before there dawns another day. If such a thing can really be, you're the very man for me. There will be a fee. Uh, naturally. I think you'll find our only fault is generosity. Then we'll have no difficulty striking a bargain. How much money in your treasury? 50,000 guilders. Yep. An idle boast, sir. You fool. We'll be roasted over a pit for your lack of wit. Makers of baubles, chimes, and clocks. Leaders in virtue. Character builders. To rid your town of this verminous pox, my fee is 50,000 guilders. 50,000? 50, he jokes. It's a hoax. Be gone, you fraud. On your way. We have no time for your preposterous play. I don't hear anything from that pipe. Not a sound. What manner of music can it be that we can't hear it? And yet we see our children hear it. I can't hear it. You do, don't you, Trusen? Yes. Magic, Your Honor. The young man can play a tune on his pipe that none but the children hear. Tinker, prankster, 
Enough of this hoax. We'll have no more of your graceless jokes. It is but music, Your Honor. I hear no music from your pipe. Try as I can. On your way, you tricky scamp. We have no need of you. And the rats. Have you need for them? Who else can get them out of your town? Tell us, Piper, is it true? Can you send them on their way? With the music that I'll play. Music we cannot hear? The music I play for rats, you'll hear. For it, for it, you'll have a sensitive ear. Is it true? Why should we put our faith in you? In Tartary, I use my magic charm to chase a swarm of gnats. And in Asia, I erased noxious broods of vampire bats. I will take a small, a brawny rat, a black, a tawny rat, a fat, a scrawny rat, and I'll exterminate them with the extraordinary magic here in my pipe. In Araby, with just a tiny thrill, I slew a million toads. They obstructed all the roads and delayed the wagon loads. All your mama and your papa rats, your smaller whopper rats, your most improper rats will be persuaded all to join their ancestors when I decide the time will be right. Of course it's true. It can't be true. I'll prove it's true. Then we will applaud you loud and thunderous. Hold your applause. Hold your applause. Why should we pause? Simply because I haven't finished. <laughs> they had a locust plague in Austerlitz that brought prodigious harm. They succumbed unto my charm, and I soon quelled that alarm. And your rodents, I am confident, will have affinity for my fine instrument, for they are music lovers, and they'll want to hear the concert I perform on my pipe. Uh, in Syria, problem serious, mysterious, I solved. I drove out a deadly bee that no human I could see. And I promise you exactly that's what I intend to do to your assorted rats, your gay young friskers, your old rats with whiskers, rats of every hue and rats of each type. Great exterminator, we admire you. I'll straighten out your ugly mess. He can't relieve our great distress. Cast in the name, we will hire you. I'll gladly do the job for you. He's not the one to get it done. He's not the one. <laughs> Good people, kindly stop your bickering. Time's flickering away. We will not pay him with guilders in the treasury. Our tower must have its golden chimes. Unlike us, the man is sly, unscrupulous. We've suffered too much strain seeking to outwit his brain. I'll make a slightly different start. I'll touch his heart. In Diradawa by the River Nile, a crocodile struck fear. He was 40 cubits long. Fifty men were not as strong. All that pleased were fervent, so your humble servant played an obligato lento and robato. He grew docile, deader than a fossil. No more crocodile just like that. You've heard of what I've done with bats, with vipers, toads, and newts, and gnats. And what I've done with crocodiles and bats, I'll do the same with all of your rats. <coughs> Is that a form of address, sir? Uh, merely a habit. More like a vice? A preface to discussing price. I'm ready now to talk of your fee. You have but to agree. To pay your price would leave our treasury bare. The money's worthless lying there. What would you do with such a sum? Have fun. What are you? What manner of man? Figure it out as best you can. I'm a juggler, one might say. I hold the night and the light of day. In a world that's such a mess, with little room for happiness. I juggle it here, and I toss it there. I take from the foul, and I give to the fair. With so much love in your heart, sir, surely you'll share a part, sir, with the unhappy children of Hamelin? Yes! yes. 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 yes.
If truly you can end this plague, this terrifying pestilence, you'll be cherished in their minds a hundred years hence. An honor, sir, worth more by far than money. It will bring you joy and a certain bliss beyond all dreams of avarice. I offer you, in the name of our children, 1,000 guilders. Come again? It is beneath my dignity to bargain. I'll make it 10. Take it, Piper. He knows my fee. I offer you 20. That's more than plenty. Please, we have a budget. Budget. The price is 50. The man's without conscience, minus a heart. He deserves a fate fashioned to fit him. I'm forced most reluctantly to outwit him. The urgency of this emergency leaves us no choice. Because of the hard-pressed state we're in, you win. 50,000 guilders? You've lost your mind. But not in advance. Not until the vermin dance in or out, every last one of them, back to Hamel out. You've heard him, good people, one and all. The bargain's made. Though he sounded more like a rusty gate, he's agreed to pay the going rate. <laughs> Now, little friends, go to your homes, sing your song, and read your poems, and have no fears. The music I play will not touch your ears. At the rise of the moon when the sun goes down, one plague will be gone from Hamelin Town. He's stolen your wits. How could you agree to such an exorbitant fee? It's all we have in our treasury. There'll be no goal for us to melt down for, for the chimes, for the glory of Hamlin Town. Gentlemen, gentlemen, such trembling emotion. Let's drink a little soothing potion. For such lack of faith, you'll soon atone. I was not made mayor for my beauty alone. himself up to me. Trucin, I hear it. The music. I don't. Yes. Yes. Why don't you hear it? Why did you hear it this morning and not now? Can't you hear it now? Listen. I hear it. His pipe. Can you see them? Look at them run. won't last long. What music, Mother? It's unbelievable. They fell asleep as soon as the music started.
Piper said the music wouldn't reach their ears. Attention. I feel the gravest apprehension when joy is misdirected and unconfined. First, let us show gratitude for our good fortune. Let me hear, for our good counselors, a thunderous cheer. Uh, modesty forbids another hero of this occasion whose wit and wisdom ended the invasion. Huzzah! I seek no applause nor any renown. All I did was to save the town, which is a mayor's duty. Now, an emergency. A letter from the king's emissary. He's on his way. He'll be here today, and our work is not completed. So, though the moment's joyous, let it not decoy us. Smelters, prepare the ovens for the gilders. Good women, go get powder and puff and show your maid of sterner stuff. Let every kettle test your feminine metal. What's merely spick now makes tanner, and Hamlin Town will win the banner. Improve each shining hour. Back to your work on the tower. And now, gentlemen, to the council room and our own serious tasks. Let's break up the casks of cheeses and wines and make sure everything's tasty from soup to pastry. Mr. Mayor, the piper's waiting for his fee. I'll see him presently. Uh, I have a request, sir. At the feast, at least it would be proper to have the children sing. How absurd. The children are not even to be seen, much less heard. But without the children, this is no town. If there's anything the king's emissary detests, yes, even worse than rats, 
It's a bunch of noisy brats at dinner. You can spoil the taste of rest wine with some little darlings, wail and whine. There's nothing makes food taste more vile than the yammer and clamor of a juvenile. By the way, where are the children? They're with the piper, father. But this is no time to pause. Have them gather straws. Prior, carry my message to them. Rewards for honest work. But woe to those who shirk. Flim, flam, flu. Flim, flam, flu. The world is full of wonder, met and magic. I can pull a twinkling star from a hat Then I'll make it disappear just like that And the magic power in the smile you possess Turns a frown upside down for you You will find it easy for all you have to do Is tell yourself you know the secret Flim, flam, flu Extraordinary. I can make the rain to fall on you too. Then I'll cause the sun to shine just on you. If there is a cloud in the sky, it rolls by, by and by, and the sun comes through. What can make you happy when you are feeling blue? Just fill your thoughts with lots of sunshine. Flim. Flam, flu. song from a crow you can find the beauty in all you perceive just believe that it's there in view always look for good things and they will come to you look with your heart and you will find it flim flam flu you lose any hope when the things that you plan fall through just you keep on dreaming and they will all come true the very day you least expect it flim flam flu Gather straws for the bricks, and none of your rascally tricks. Oh, 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 what is all this? Yeah. The mayor's orders. Mother, Pipe Piper was just in the classroom. No, 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 no. Wait just a minute. What is it, Johnny? The Pipe Piper was just in the schoolroom, and he did all sorts of magic things. He turned an apple into a snowball. He made the milk turn red. And more than that, he rid us of those terrible rats. Oh, Mother, I hope he never leaves. Isn't there some way we can make him stay? Maybe. If we could turn snowballs back into apples. <laughs> mm -hmm. oh. The burdens of office. The time has come to pay the piper. 
But of course. In Hamlin, there's no frugality. Our spirit flows with liberality. My worthy colleague will bring the receipt. All you have to do is sign on the designated dotted line. Without reading, you'd have me sign? Your signature's a mere formality required in any municipality. Uh, just to say you got your pay. Come on, Piper, we're in a hurry. <laughs> I think I'd better read it. You'll find nothing improper, sir. Just here and there a clause to conform with custom and the laws. <laughs> I'll read it. Well, we're busy men, but if you must, then unroll the scroll. <laughs> Just here and there a clause to conform with the laws. To be held in escrow for a hundred years. Uh, mere formality regarding your fee. A hedge against litigation, uh, inflation, any currency. <laughs> I see. And this? Uh, a guarantee in warranty. A stipulation that your fee be forfeit should there be pollution of the river. No danger, of course, but uh, required by the courts under the law of torts. And this about rebuilding roads. Required by our building codes. I see as we go up the line, the print gets rather fine. Reparations. A safeguard for future generations. Oh, this is best. Far cleverer than the rest. A mere legal art, uh, protecting the party of the first part. I am now to deposit with you the sum of 1,000 guilders, guaranteeing the plague will never return. And if by chance they do, then I owe you... 50,000 guilders. Men of Hamlin, settle your debt. Is that a threat? All we ask is meet our stipulations. Maneuvers and manipulations. How dare you, sir? In all our dealings to prevent ill feelings, we require a legal form. Tis no departure from the norm. Come, fellow, your name on paper. As a rule, I refrain from calling any man a fool. Heed me now. I'll wait until yon clock strikes the hour. Don't let me go away without my pay. Smelters. Prestige is a knack, it's a skill, it's an art, knowing how to outsmart with a sleight of hand and heart. Prestige is a thing not acquired in a day. You must learn every way to avoid and to delay. You can attain prestige by hook or by crook. And if the bait is right, you need no hook. We just gain prestige for a type that's supreme, for we just pull the scheme that's a prestige seeker dream. Oh, Mr. Piper, I hope I'm not disturbing you. I was just gathering wool from the clouds in the sky. The clouds blow away when a boy comes by. Sir? We saw what happened with the mayor and you. And Truce and I, well, we don't want you to go away. I know that, son. Truce says you mustn't judge us all by the men in our town hall. He's gone to the people to plead with them to keep their word. I hope he succeeds for their sake. By sages, we're told all that glitters is not gold. Many things may be more bright. There's none richer than he who honors fellow man. That's a value real and right. Man can strive for riches, a natural 
desire But he mustn't overlook a greater goal For what will he profit by something he'll acquire If in finding what he gains he'll lose his soul A man who's unwise only sees things with his eyes Things that can be bought or sold Will find on the day all the glitter dims away What he thought was pure Was poor fool's gold I wish I didn't have to go away Then you'll stay? In a way Whenever you hear a certain sound I'll be around <laughs> Good citizens, hear me. You. A word with you about the piper to whom we owe so much. This is no time to tarry with all this stuff to carry. The piper wants his pay and the mayor's refused him. Now it's up to us to see he gets his due. Finance is beyond our province. Tis the council you must convince. Not so. It is your honor that the council cheapens your worth as people. It is your vow to pay that he breaks now. Well, we don't want that. Hush, woman. What do you know of such complicated affairs? They're not the mayor's guilders, are they? Listen to who's talking. There goes a piper. Wait, piper. Wait, piper. They don't understand. Somewhere in my mind, I hear a note of music yet to be played for men who will not hear it. darkest memory to rule the day you sent the piper from you without his pay. My heart will fly to heaven on the day he'll be mine. We'll be standing on the threshold of a moment divine. And from that day forever we will live hand in hand. It's the day of days, the one for which I've dreamed and I've planned. If tis true, Sir New Moon, about his best forgot, I've happier plans for you than marriage to a Hamlin's misbegot. But, Father, it's true, and I love, and it's he I intend to wed. Don't be a silly child. Tis true you're soon to be a bride, but the groom-to-be, I decide. And if my plans bear fruit, your hand will be won by the king's emissary, my future son. Such a match will enhance my prestige. I'll be honored. Respected. Easily re-elected. But I don't want to marry the king's emissary. I don't even know him. Know him you shall, and without delay. You'll meet him at the gate today. Make haste. Don't waste another second. Array yourself in your finest gown. The king's emissary must look on you as the fairest in our fair town. But I must see Trucin now. Not now or ever. You'll see him never. No one can keep us apart. We'll see. Now, my colleagues, remember, not a word about the chimes until they are ready. 
even if he asks a hundred times to see them, be steady, divert him, engage him, keep his mind on other things until he hears the clock that brings its golden notes. Understood? Uh, yes, 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 yes. I'll handle the meeting and the greeting. Mr. Mayor! For the last time, pay the piper. Why, you foolish fellow, we did our part. Trickery, deceit. The king's emissary will be told about Hamelin. Shiny without, tarnished within. You'll win no banner while I can speak. Speak? Where we'll put you, we'll hear no shriek. Arrest this pettifog. This self-seeking demagogue. What are the charges? Troublemaker, sower of treason, disloyalty or loss of reason. We'll find the proper ordinance to cover your offense. Away with it! Constellation of Orion. We know the future of our city lives in your hands. So we'll make place to satisfy your eyes. We bid you welcome, bid you welcome, bid you welcome, bid you welcome. such vulgar vigor. I am not attuned to such rigorous enthusiasm. <laughs> Spare me a nervous spasm. And now I dare say that you have a key to offer me. Why, yes, Excellency. Welcome, sire. A symbol of our gratitude and our... Etc., etc., etc. A good fellow before you start. I know that speech by heart. And now, no doubt, you have a daughter somewhere about to <laughs> present to me. Excellency, how did you know? <laughs> it's always so. And always does. <laughs> and uh, now let me see uh, what uh, brought me here to this uh, hamlet of Hamelin. The banner, Excellency. Oh, yes, 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 the competition. Get on with it, Mayor. You see, my time has a limit. I have another place to visit, a city called Hamelout. <laughs> Hamelout! <laughs> Hamelout? I'm sorry, truly sorry. But you'll find that this time a visit to poor, unfortunate Hamelout, a waste of your precious time. I fear Hamelout will not vie for honors in the competition this year. Besides, we thought you'd wish to dine first. Uh, uh, dinner, no, but uh, I do have a <coughs> choking thirst. His Excellency has a thirst. Bring out the wines. <laughs> <laughs> So I kept the lady in waiting. Waiting! 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 And waiting! <laughs> uh, let's get down to the business at hand. Uh, uh, what exhibit am I to view? Not yet, Your Excellency. The clockmaker's work on the chimes is not nearly through. Let's ply him with wine. A little more won't hurt him. No, no, he's had his fill. We must find other means to divert him. Uh, yes? 
And now, now, gentlemen, let's proceed. A little less talk, a little more speed. Uh, patience, noble sire. Let me tempt your palate. These Arabian plums are ripe and succulent. The nectar of Beaujolais grapes can temper a temper that's uh, uh, truculent. This Persian melon, uh, not too tart, not too mellow. Uh, no, no, no fruit for me. <laughs> Look what an apple did to that poor fellow. <laughs> no! No, enough of this feasting and cheer. Uh, let's get on with uh, whatever the occasion that brought me here. All in good time, Your Excellency. Uh, time, time. It has something to do with a clock. <laughs> That's it! Your Excellency, uh, before your official inspection, may I turn your attention in this direction? You may. <laughs> you may. You may. The key, the jailer's a friend. You must escape. I can't leave, no. But why? I want to go with you. No, more. Running away is not the solution. Don't you see? We'll not find peace anywhere else until we find it here first. But I fear for your safety if you stay. I know they mean to harm you. You said you were willing to run away with me. Are you just as willing to stay here in Hamlin? Stand beside me while I fight. Yes, my darling. How can I tell you? Now at last I see Things that were hidden Now are clear to me Music of the piper. No, Trucin, he's gone. Yes, gone. And our honor with him, that's what I fear. What the piper will do to us? No, what we've done to ourselves. I'm afraid of music I can't hear. Come back. Paul. Paul. 
Where are you going? Do you hear the piper? No. No, where is he? His music is coming from over there. He's calling us. Listen to me. Can't you hear me? Jeffrey? Michael? Debbie? wine and the food's aroma. The man's achieved a happy coma. Father! Father! Shh. Father, he's taken the children. The children can be fed later. No, please listen. The Pied Piper waltzed them away. They're bewitched. Which? Gone. The children gone. I last saw them going toward the river. Oh, the children! <laughs> If truly this is an emergency, be thankful that your mayor is me. Why, they're dancing. They're gay. Take them on the mountain path. He'll lead them up and lead them down. That path goes nowhere but back to town. Of course. They'll come upon the cliff, the wall of stone. No one has ever climbed it. They'll be home. No. No, it cannot be. Look, you need no glass to see. What? What the hell? Mount. Mount. It is open. My boy here. Is my son playing with yours? my son, my boy John, I can't live now that he has gone, all is grief, all is woe, no more gladness Will my heart know? Sorrow dark fills the day. All the light has been shut away. Only ahead, only gloom 
and the tears will shed. Here they stepped, laughed and wept, danced and crept, prayed and slept. Now their game. Your Honor, I know you and your counselors are busy with important affairs, and I'll only take a moment of your time. It's about Johnny. Who's Johnny? He's my son. You remember the boy with the curly red hair? The boy that opened your carriage door for you once. He's gone. Looked everywhere and I can't seem to find him. And I know such men as wise as you can surely help me find a small boy. Why don't you answer me? Your decisions have always been so quick and so clever, like the way you handle the piper. I understand your concern for our welfare, and I won't bother you again ever. But he's only just a baby. Your Honor, I know you understand. Because you have a child of your own. This mountain's solid granite. I don't believe they ever went in it. It was you who saw them go. Beware when their mother's woe turns to wrath. Where's the mayor? We're tired of his speeches and his deceit. He must be around here somewhere. Our patience is at an end. We demand to see the mayor. Where is he? They're blasting up on the mountainside with a cannon. That will surely bring back your children. Cannon and artillery? What medicine for our misery. Now its ingredients must be blended with the strictest obedience. One part uh, white powder. There we go. <laughs> and uh, one part, one part black. <laughs> and uh, two parts uh, sulfur. <laughs> there we are. <laughs> to, uh, to complete the stack. And let's see, one pinch for the pot. Uh, uh, you there, uh, clean the cannon and insert the ball, and I'll assign tasks for one and all. I've uh, figured the target. I've uh, measured the distance. I've even allowed for uh, wind resistance. Oh, incidentally, I once uh, wrote a directory on missiles and their trajectory. <laughs> I blew up a fortress, killed 104. I'd have won a medal, but we weren't at war. <laughs> Fusilier, are you in the rear? Uh, uh, come here. Uh, ready the fuse. No time to lose. Apply the light, and I'll 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 watch the flight. Uh, uh, Your Excellency, if I do, uh, there'll be a big hole in you. I, I I don't mean to offend, but you see, you're standing at the wrong end. <laughs> How clever of you to mention. I merely wanted to see if you were paying attention. 
shot is fired, and I am tired. We, we blasted this mountain inside out and nary a cry from a child. We must find a way to save their lives. The votes of the husbands, the wrath of their wives. You set my nerves a twitter with all this bitterness. Lucky my litter! Oh, no, no, don't go. No, we'll yeah, yeah. Oh, it's suddenly too absurd. Children lured by a piper whose music no one has heard. Well, what children do you speak of, pray? I saw not one throughout the day. <laughs> Anywhere! Methinks I smell conspiracy. <laughs> Mayhap! Get up! What ingratitude. Father, everyone's looking for you. There's trouble in the air. The people are waiting in the square. Hey? Oh, of course. Well, I'll be there. They know that they can trust their mayor. To do what? Yeah, what? To do what? 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 Quiet! Stop squealing and squeaking as if you were rats. Remember that you're bureaucrats. We've done it before. We'll do it again. We'll manage them. Uh, you have a strategy. It's as old as the kingdom. I know it by rote. To escape their wrath, escape the goat. And the person, Trusen. Oh, no, father. the cause of your sorrow and misery? Who's to blame for this deviltry? That viper, the piper, who brought him here? Let grief not dim our memories. We are victims of truths and sorceries. Truths and sorceries. Let not sorrow blight our reason. Trucen must be hanged for treason. Oh, no. It's not true. He did not but say we had a debt to pay. What further proof is needed of his sorcery? He had turned my child against me. He's the culprit. He's the one who lost your daughter and lost your son. Mr. Mayor, hanging me will never bring voices back to laugh and sing. He's right. We want our children. <laughs> Did not Trucen rebel in the music of that devil, the piper, which none of us heard? I tell you, they're in league. They even look alike. No! No, Father! There's music all around us that you will never hear, while the clink of the golden gilder rings loudest in your ear. It is time. It is time. Our hearts must find a way to accept the bitter fate of all who fail to pay the piper. You've lost your children, a heart-wounding blow, yet they lost their parents long ago. It's true. It's true. But is there nothing we can do? Seek your heart's relief and acceptance of your fate and find consolation in helping others. People of Hamelin, be not misled by this criminal's harangue. First things first, let's see this scoundrel hang. Then for all the world to see, for our children, a shining golden plaque in loving memory. No golden plaque will ever return your children. There is a way that you can find solace. The homeless children of Hamela would be warmed with our love and our treasury's gilders. We will. Oh, oh, we yes. Yes. Instead of being saddened by your grief, you're maddened. Mark you, on another calmer day, you'll see that mine was the wiser way. What he calls love and decency is the shortest road to bankruptcy. Enough of talk that covers greed. Fathers and mothers have a need to seek an end to grief and sorrow. To face with hope a new tomorrow. The time has come to make a change. Mara. mission of mercy than for us to pray. 
May the news of our determination spread throughout the land. The grieving parents of Hamelin take all children to their hearts as their own kin. O oh, Father, in thy words, suffer little children to come unto us as we kneel in silent prayer. Ha, ha, ha. 